Hello and welcome to IDEX. I'm Charles Forrester. I'm a Senior Defence Industry Analyst with Chains. I'm here with retired Colonel Rick Fawcett from GD Mission Systems and we're here to talk about the MeshNet V6 um, communication system. Hey Charles, thank you very much. Uh, today we at General Dynamics are very proud to be uh, announcing the release of our next generation of vehicle networking systems, which we refer to as MeshNet V6. So MeshNet is a product line that we've been working on now for 25 years. It's gone ser with a series of evolutions, six to be exact, and uh, today is, v is V6. So this is our new generation. We believe it's, it's unique in the market, a world leading, uh, just the way we've structured it, the way it works, and the way it can grow. So it's a very modular system. It's been based on our products to date, so you can more easily swap out. And like I say, it's designed in such a way that as technology evolves, especially in this field, we can continue to evolve this product line without major disruptions to, uh, to the actual base products. So you talk about some of the, the heritage and the work you've done in the past. You talk about how this has grown, some of the other companies and countries that you've worked with to get to where you are today. Yeah, so uh, this all started with a program in Canada back in the 90s. Uh, which was our first foray into vehicle networking and communications as a company. We then ported that into the UK, upgrading as we went. We were successful selling that product base in a number of international uh, opportunities. Canada did an upgrade about five years ago. The UK has now just done a, another upgrade. And that work, coupled with our own internal R&D, is what's resulted in MeshNet V6. So the driver today for a lot of vehicle and, and C2 systems is, is to increase the amount of data that's been able to pro be provided to uh, users inside a vehicle. How have you seen that evolve over time? So uh, our original uh, uh, intercom systems, data systems, were really focused on voice comms, uh, crew intercom and then voice connectivity, radio connectivity. And now with the advent of a myriad of sensors and different IT or battle management systems are then a vehicle, we now see the need to go up into the gigahertz range of drive of data within the vehicle. And that's what our MeshNet product does. So it supports all the traditional uses, plus it'll support the video uh, on the vehicle, which now cameras, vehicles can have you know, literally dozens of cameras and different sensors. That's what we've designed the product line to be able to, to, to handle. And if you don't need that, then you have a, a different makeup of it. The other advantage we have of our modular approach is a small vehicle only needs a few boxes, a bigger vehicle will need obviously more capacity, more users, and our system just you know, gangs together, put it together to meet those different user requirements. Mm -hmm. And one thing for vehicles, of course, is power, um, ability and power requirements. Absolutely. So how do you deal with that as, um, you know, for, for fusing all this information together into a, something that user can, can use? Yeah, so we're very cautious of the whole swap, the power, uh, the size and space. So for our size and space, we actually use the same footprint of the um, products from earlier generations. So if it fit before, it'll fit now. We try to common eye or standardize our cabling. And then for power, again, we're very aware of the power demands within a vehicle. So using the latest technologies, uh, making sure our architecture is sound, we, we minimize the power drain of, of, uh, of our products. And uh, heat as well is going to be something when you're using a lot of uh, IT equipment like this as well. And how do you manage the heat distribution? So heat, uh, of course, it'd be really nice to have big fans in a vehicle. That's not possible. So a lot of the heat dissipation comes from the design of our boxes. So we design it, you know, right from the beginning to understand how to dissipate heat. And so we try to do that through uh, through mechanical heat distribution, vice, you know, other types of uh, you know fans, etc. And then the other thing is again, it's it's the components you pick for your uh, for your your product. So different components you know, give out different amounts of heat, so we try to uh, minimize not just the power draw, but the heat production of, of our components. Now looking at the user interface, so I understand there's an apps-based approach to this. Now, how have you developed that? Why have you developed this? And uh, how is that going to improve the modularity moving forward? Uh, uh, good question. So for, uh, on, the, on the sort of the app side, you know, we have our standard intercom type act, uh, um, uh, interfaces. And we've used a significant amount of human factors engineering to do this. So we've spent time with soldiers from multiple armies, with our, our HFE experts, to figure out what makes the most sense. So there's a lot of common symbology out in the world today, thanks to uh, you know, cell phones. So where it makes sense, we've used that common symbology. So the users look at it, they just intuitively know how to do it. We've also worked on processes to make sure we don't have extra steps in that. You know, so we only do, or the user only has to do what they need to do to get you know, what they want done out of it. Uh, the other thing we have is uh, we have lots of expandability within our products. So if the users have the unique applications that they want, 
our products can host those applications as well. So there's excess processing power, there's excess storage capacity. We can even have put in different cards if that's what the user needs to meet their specific requirements. Colonel, thank you very much for your time. Hey, my pleasure, thank you.